And before we start any presentation at Royal Roads, we also always acknowledge the lands that we are on. So our campus is located on the traditional lands of the Kosepsum and the Lekwungen ancestors and families. And we're really grateful to be able to do the work that we can do here today. And many of us are working from home from different locations and such. So just want to take a moment to recognize the lands that we're on no matter where you're located today. I know many of you have been uh, tuning into sessions throughout this whole open house event. And we are so excited that you're going to be joining us here today for our session on the School of Environment and Sustainability. So my name is Christy Jones and I'm an education advisor at the university, but I'm excited to be taking a back seat in, the moment, in a moment to be letting our wonderful presenters and panelists take the stage for this session. Um, so we will have our program heads joining us in a few moments here to do an overview of our program our programs. So we have Dr. Leslie King, who's the program head for our environmental practice programs for the Master of Arts and Master of Science and our new graduate certificate in science and policy of climate change. Dr. Hilary Layton, who is the program head for our graduate certificate, graduate diploma and Master's of Arts in environmental education and communication. And Dr. Mickey Noble, who's the program head for a bachelor's of science and environmental science program. Um, so thank you so much for coming today. And then we're also joined by some wonderful students and alumni from some of our environment and sustainability programs. So we have Chloe Fott from our MA in environmental education and communication program, Eugene Lee from the BSc in environmental science, and Christina Nugent from the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science as well. So really looking forward to getting into our panel discussion today a little further down the line. We also have many folks helping us in the chat box today behind the scenes who will be saying a hello in a moment. So um, really thankful for everyone who's helping bring this session to life today. Now that we've introduced um, who's going to be speaking a little bit today, we'd also love to get to know who is in the room watching with us. So if you do feel comfortable typing away in the chat box, please do feel free to let us know um, where you're joining us from, whether that's within Canada or outside of Canada, um, what drew you to the session, what program you might be interested in, anything that you'd like to share, feel free to just type it away in the chat box now and I'll continue on through our agenda. So like I said, we're going to be doing a bit of an overview of all the programs within the School of Environment and Sustainability. And then after that, we're going to be digging into a bit of a panel discussion with some of our students and alumni so you can really get a feel for what it is like to be a student within our programs here. So we welcome any questions that you have for our panelists all throughout the presentation. We'll be watching that chat box so you can tune um, ask any questions you have there. And chances are, if you are thinking of a question, somebody else in the room is thinking of the same question too. So don't be shy with that. Just quickly at a glance, here are all the programs that we offer within the School of Environment and Sustainability. So we are going to dig into all of these a little bit more in depth during the slides portion, but just so you can see a snapshot of all the different options we have on offer. And with that in mind, we are going to get started on our undergraduate programs. And for that, I'm going to pass it off to Mickey. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm really glad that you've been able to join us today. So uh, this is just a quick overview of the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science program. Um, it basically comes in two flavors. If you are able to join us in Victoria, um, you'll be able to take it as an, a one-year program where you start in September and finish at the end of August. Um, it's a very intensive experience and includes lots of lab and field components, um, as well as uh, our major project, which is a student research uh, component to it. If you are interested in uh, a blended option, um, because coming to Victoria is really not a, a great option for you for the year, um, then please join us for our three-week residencies in May, um, and each residency is followed by a distance component where you'll be uh, taking distance courses, interacting with your cohort, and doing lots of, uh, lots of schoolwork in between. You'll join us again for another residency in May, another round of distance courses, and a final residency in May. Um, our residencies for this program are where we're going to give you your lab and your field components, um, and really let you uh, explore the campus and, and find out more about what makes it special. Next slide, please. 
there we go. I will give you over to Leslie, who I believe is going to talk about the BSC and Environmental Practice Program. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I'm delighted that we have people from Peru, India, Nova Scotia. Amazing. Thank you. So the uh, Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science programs in environmental practice are part of a set of programs that we offer in connection with, in partnership with Eco Canada, uh, which is the sector organization for environmental employment in Canada. And so those keep us uh, very practically oriented to uh, the needs of employers in the environmental sector. Um, so these are fully online, 60 credit, part-time, flexible programs. Uh, and you can take of those 60 credits, you can um, transfer in 15 credits if you already have courses at the uh, third year level. And you also can take designated courses from universities all across Canada, which is a delightful part of this program because you get to enroll in uh, courses at many, many different Canadian universities. Uh, and the, these programs all align with the Eco Canada occupational standards and prepare you for the environmental professional or environmental professional in training certification. Thanks a lot. Moving on. Perfect. Thank you, Leslie. And now we're going to be moving on to our graduate programs. And I believe you can oh, continue I'm next. on here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christy. Uh, this is an exciting new program. It's a graduate certificate in science and policy of climate change. And the first set of courses is underway right now. Uh, it's three courses or nine credits, again offered in partnership with Eco Canada. It's entirely online, and, and you can take the certificate just in itself, or it can also count as credits towards the Master's in Environmental Practice. So those three courses can be transferred right in to the MEP, and you get credit for that. And at the end, you can get both credentials both the graduate certificate and the um, master's degree in environmental practice. So the three courses are the first one is the science of climate change and impacts of climate change. The second is climate policy. And the third is uh, climate solutions. And, for, and this is an experiential course where students go out to organizations and help them with their responses to climate change. Thanks a lot. Next. Oh, that's me too. <laughs> I'm hogging the limelight here. So the master's degree of arts or science in environmental practice is again a fully online 30 credit part-time, very flexible program other than the first two courses you get to choose which courses you take when and um, the sequence of those courses and how many you take a semester if you want to finish quite quickly in say two years you can take two or three courses a semester and if you want to spread it out for instance if you have a demanding job and this program is designed to accommodate the schedules of uh, working professionals, then you might want to just take one course a semester and spread it out over time. Again, it aligns with the Eco Canada Occupational Standards and prepares you for the Environmental Professional Certification. Many thanks. I think you've heard the last of me. Hillary. Hi there. Can you see me? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Right. Thanks, Leslie. Nice to see everybody. Um, and thanks everybody for joining. Yeah, it is wonderful when we can connect in this way. Um, so yeah, I am the program head for um, the GC, the graduate certificate, the diploma, and the MA in environmental education and communication. And it's really beautifully designed because it's uh, it's a step-by-step -step kind of program. So some people want to come in and do a graduate um, 
a certificate, which is the first three courses, which starts with a kind of foundations into sustainability and uh, really getting your feet wet into the world of um, environmental education. Uh, and the second course, and these are both on our first residency, is uh, environmental communications. It's just a profoundly beautiful course taught by another faculty from um, another school, the School of uh, Communications and Culture. And it has a kind of arts-based approach. So those two first courses are the first residency. Um, and they're also, there's one, uh, the next course, the online course in design and theory is a way to make what you've learned pedagogical, learning how to facilitate what you've learned and create educational programs or ways to continue the uh, environmental discourse. So those first three courses are the graduate certificate. Then if you carry on and you do all of the coursework, you could get the diploma. And if you carry on at the, um, to complete with a thesis or a major research project, you'll, you'll receive the MA. So the other courses that are offered within the um, a roster of the, um, the program, wonderful dive into systems perspectives, uh, there's a field school component in the second residency, uh, a course called Biosphere and Sustainability, where we work within local Indigenous communities on uh, restoration projects and, and other, um, other things. We also do an eco-psychology course in the second residency, where, you know, while theory is important and reading is important, we kind of learn to read the world and have a very immersive and arts-based experience there. Um, so it's a really, really rich program and um, yeah, with two different uh, options at the end for how to graduate um, with some lovely electives there for the major research people, major research project people to take. And um, we'll be hearing from one of our students today. I'm so glad she's here with us, Chloe. But this is a blended program. So it really, uh, it's cohort based. So you really go through this program with people that you can learn from and learn alongside and really support each other. Um, it's an ambitious program to do while you're working, but it's really doable. Um, although, you know, you're going to have to set aside some things for a couple of years. It's about two, two and a half years long. Um, yeah, but we'd uh, welcome any questions and we'd welcome uh, applications for the program. So um, that's good for me. Oh, I'm going to do this one too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the MA or MSc in Environment uh, and Management program, uh, also in our school. So um, I think Rachel from Nova Scotia was interested in this one I saw in the chat box. Um, so again, per, uh, really, um, the, this Master of Arts or Master of Science is 26 months blended learning again. So starting with residency, going online, coming back for residencies, online again, uh, and then back for a third residency. Uh, and again, you can choose between a major, the a major research project or a thesis. Um, and there's a new on-campus offering, all on-campus offering to be launched in 2022 due to demand. And this program really works with the professional in practice um, and brings leading edge research and looks at some really complex uh, problems that we're facing in the world today and uh, has a beautiful uh, blend of science and art, uh, a beautiful integrative way to look at uh, natural and social science. So I'll, I think I'll leave it at that. Perfect. Thank you, Hillary. And the final program we are going to overview today is our um, new graduate diploma and MA in climate action leadership, which um, launched just recently. So this one is offered as a one year 18 credit graduate diploma or a two year 36 credit Master of Arts. And just we have the little star there at the bottom, you'll see that the MA option is still subject to the final approval for the BC Ministry of Advanced Education. Um, but the graduate diploma is currently running right now. And then this is another one of those programs where you will be able to ladder in to the MA program once that is approved. Uh, so this is another blended program and it uses an open learning curriculum. So they have a website set up and a lot of the um, learnings and teachings that they will be doing throughout the program will be available um, for communities to use, for the public to use as well, which is a really cool feature of the program. And then this is another one where you can choose from a thesis, an internship, or an elective stream. So there's several different options throughout there to cater the program to um, however you learn best and whatever is going to um, create the best learning experience for you overall so you can make it your own. 
Alrighty, and with that, we are going to stop sharing the slides and dig into the panel session for today. And Hillary, if you'd like to come back on, then I will hand it over to you to start off the panel session today. Thanks so much, Christy. And uh, I'm just wondering if uh, Chloe and Eugene and Christina, you could all just, um, yeah, here you are and Mickey and Leslie, how great is this? Lovely, good to see everybody. Where's Chloe? I can't seem to see Chloe. There you are. Ah, okay, hi. And hi, Eugene. Yeah, hi, Christina. So good. Okay, so um, I think we'll start with Chloe. I'm going to have a conversation here with Chloe and then pass it over to Mickey to have a conversation with uh, her BSc student. So hello, Chloe, newly <laughs> freshly defended Chloe. <laughs> Yes. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, and very happy to be here today. Yes. Um, and excited to share how wonderful um, my experience was with uh, with Meek, which is the Masters of Arts in Environmental Education and Communication, but we all call ourselves Meekers. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a family affair, isn't it? Because you you know, your husband had been in our program as well a number of years ago and uh, we were so happy to see you arrive just a few years ago, and we had a wonderful time on campus the last time you and I really mixed it up. And I'm just curious if you could give us some, maybe some highlights for you. What were, what was it that, um, first of all, drew you to the program, other than maybe your husband's recommendation, um, and maybe a bit about what you do for a living? And then, you know, how did, how did your work, your research, your learning uh, fit with that? Yeah, so my husband um, did the program and spoke very highly of it. Um, and at the time, I had a very small child, um, <laughs> a newborn, when he was finishing up. And uh, he said, oh, okay, it's your turn. You could do something else, but I recommend this. And I said, oh, I should find something else. But as I dug in, I really I really wanted something in person. Um, and But of course, I'm a teacher. I'm a high, secondary teacher. And so I was working at the same time and it would just seemed impossible to, to balance those two things and we just really fit beautifully with what I wanted to do. Um, and just all the courses really inspired me. And I know he had a, a absolutely amazing experience with his cohort and his instructors as well, because I'd gotten to sort of get a taste of that <clears throat> um, through through having them over and things like that when he was going through the program. So that's kind of how it all started. And yeah, when I was on mat leave with my second child, I decided to launch right into it because um, I thought if I waited any longer, I would be 50 and that <laughs> my kids would have to be teenagers. So yeah, so I started my journey and it's been an amazing process of, I mean, the residencies really just draw you right in there. I mean, you start online a little bit at the beginning. Um, and even then, like just meeting uh, a cohort of people that share your sort of goals and excitement about taking environmental education um, to the next level and really making it meaningful. Um, and I really enjoyed like I'm a teacher, but it wasn't just teachers in the public education system or the private. It was teachers in all different aspects of education, nonprofits, kayak instructors, that kind of thing. Um, so that diversity really helped, um, I think, add to the conversation and, and the residencies and even the online learning. There was just this beautiful blend of drawing in people, um, meeting new people of all different levels from different different walks of life that all sort of shared a similar passion. Um, uh, yeah, that I really enjoyed as we went along and the diversity of courses was amazing too. So um, as I evolved through this process, um, for, as a teacher, I was really feeling a lack of, um, a lack of connection to other teachers about these topics locally. So my research, um, which became my thesis was actually to start um, a, an old, a chapter of an organization called um, the Environmental Educators Provincial Specialist Association, which is a public school thing, but it didn't exist here, a way to sort of communicate with other teachers and um, go for and do work um, in environmental education, because it's a bit isolating sometimes in your own schools. 
So as I led through my cohort model, I got really excited about having that sort of communication with other people. And so I developed and just went ahead and started something. And from there created a, uh, um, a thesis as well, and in addition to the actual project um, where I was weaving in my own personal story of the journey, um, along with a case study, study, which was a little bit more analytical. Um, and it's been amazing because it's been a lot of alert work, but at the same time, now that I've done my thesis, I can put the, the, the package together. Uh, I, can, I can graduate. I still have this amazing group of people that I'm working with, both my cohort still continuing on and that process flowing, but also uh, the work to be done here locally. Um, it's just inspired me to continue that, those connections and keep working with my, my group, so yeah. Chloe, it's just lovely to hear you. Uh, you're fairly glowing today, I just have to say. And, you know, I, I just really also admire how faithful you've been to what drew you to the program, what you were most yearning for in your own practice, and you followed that thread through with your research. And that's what we hope for. That's the kind of applied learning that we, we put on the brochure. So we really hope this happens. And um, you've really done just such a fine job of that, of bringing people together and Boy, we need that more than ever now. So you've really started something there, a, a lovely Coast Sa or a Salish Sea chapter. Um, but, you know, you've got this pattern in you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> of gathering people up and bringing them together. And I loved how that came out in your research and so clearly. And it's never easy when you're also balancing the analytics with your own personal journey. So, you, you know, just a beautiful both and kind of experience. So thank you so much for that. And I don't think we should take up all the time, but um, I'll pass it over now to Mickey, but it's great to see you and thank you for sharing your research with us. All right, well, we're gonna segue to now for something slightly different. Um, Christina and Eugene, what I'd like you guys to, to, to share is you, you came to the program, you had some ideas about what the program might be, how did that feed into what your experience with the program was and what you've been doing since? You should go first. I guess I will since my mic is on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'd say that coming from uh, SAIT, I already had kind of an idea of what the program might be from, because I really didn't think I was going to apply for it because uh, from what my friends were saying um yeah like it was it was tough but um i was like oh the program that we're in right now is already so hard like how how much harder could it be um so that was kind of like uh kind of going through that um encouraged me to take on what um the bsc program had and also i was just in I was ready to get a degree <laughs> after being school in school for so long, um, but uh, from being from starting my environmental science journey, um, it I realized it was something that I was like super passionate about. So, going from state to rural roads just really helped me achieve that um, in a shorter amount of time, and yeah, um, it was definitely. I'd say that state and Royal roads are equally as difficult, um, but yeah, I, I really liked how, um, kind of speaking to what Chloe said, the, I felt our cohort was very much, um, like we, we were very cohesive um, at an early stage. And like, I, I even talked to Mickey about this too. And she said that we, yeah, like we all got along pretty well um, pretty quickly. So that was kind of encouraging to, to uh, complete the journey together. So especially since we did both in person and online. So it was, it was nice to, to already know each other going into the online stuff. That's actually one of the pieces that works really well for the blended program too, is they have that opportunity to meet and gel as a group before they actually move online. Yeah. Yeah. Eugene, how, how about your take on this whole? Hi, Mickey. 
It's been a while. It has been. I haven't seen you in a bit. <laughs> Six years since I graduated, and it was uh, it was a great time. Um, I was in a one year program. Uh, it was like a boot camp. Uh, Eco Talks was great. <laughs> one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, it you know uh, like Chloe and Christina said, this program has what what really what I got out of it is the friendships that I have built and garnered in the six years that I've, I've graduated since I am still in touch with my cohort. Some of them are my really good friends and we regularly get together when, when, uh, when we can. So they're across Canada and some are across the world working in, in different sectors. Uh, I myself was working in the wastewater sector, water and wastewater sector, um, primarily in a technical area. Um, unfortunately, I got furloughed through um, due to the pandemic, and now um, I'm an HR manager of all things. So not quite uh, in the environmental sector, but hopefully getting back into it one, one of these days. But um, I'm just very grateful to be working. However, with the programs uh, with within the BSC uh, ES program in class for the year, I thought that, you know, it was a very tough year. One of the hardest things that I've done, as Christina had said, but it was very rewarding. Um, the knowledge that we garnered through the, throughout the program is applicable to um, different sectors that one might choose to go into within the environmental field. So uh, it really depends on, on the person as to where they want to be in, in the environmental field. But um, the program does cover quite a bit in terms of, of where one chooses to be working in, uh, especially in the technical field. What I, I came into the, uh, into the program with um, not as much of a, a, a working background as opposed to some of my classmates. So I had a little bit tougher time finding a job, but when I did, I you know the skills that I did uh, garner through the program really helped. So before I, what I do recommend to students is, is understanding what they're really getting into and committing to it, but also understanding where they want to be in terms of field, because then they can also talk to their professors as to how they can flourish within that field. And um, within this program, it, it really does help. The two of you like to comment a little bit on your major project experience. Christina's was a little truncated, but uh but you certainly got the full meal deal. <laughs> I did. So I was very lucky. Um, my major project was on uh, on different species of, uh, so it was, uh, um, what was it now? Six years ago. So <laughs> it, it was uh, on different vegetation that, that it, within, within the Royal Roads University and, and it was a great major project. It, and what it did allow us to do is, is really understand um, the, different, the different areas of, of providing a project and, and delivering it, which is very much like what we would do within, uh, within uh, working in a sector. So taking it into a, um, into a planning process, going into it and, and uh, doing the, the job itself and then providing our, our teachers and our professors um, what the, the results of, of what we've done. So it was, it was excellent in that manner. Um, for my project, yeah, um, we did a baseline water quality study um, on a few of the, uh, on Halley Creek and also the ponds in the Japanese garden. Um, and it was something that was brought forward from um, the faculty itself. So it was kind of a neat way to um, do an inaugural um, monitoring project that would, you know, hopefully be used for further for future decisions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like Mickey said, our we did get into um, the planning stages and, and execution of the project, but it did some some of the um, lab work or field work kind of got um, got cut back because of COVID. So, um, but kind of like Eugene said, it the, the major product really allowed um, everyone to kind of 
go through the processes of managing a project from start to finish. And I think that's that has been really helpful um, experience and kind of like, for me, it's um, provided kind of like the way that I work within a team um, for for an extended period of time because that was that was one consistent team that we had over eight months. Um, whereas like we in all of our classes we had like smaller um, teams, so it was nice to kind of grow with everyone in in that team and and work together and kind of um, be in different. Um, like work titles within the team because we we shared responsibilities and and one person would facilitate um, certain projects or some certain parts of the project throughout the the eight months. So yeah, I thought it was a really um, meaningful experience to and something that I can definitely put on my resume and be like, hey, I actually did something um, and. Cause like, that's one of the hardest things about trying to get a job post, post school is that actual experience. Um, and it's what, as I've found, uh, trying to find work since I graduated just in um, October was um, that, yeah, just having the experience to show, even though I've been in school for so long, um, unfortunately it doesn't mean a whole lot unless you've had that, you know, hands-on work. So from the past uh, year, I think I have accumulated a lot of experience through that. So, yeah. That's, I think one of the, one of the real strengths, both of the, the BSc program, but the RU programs in general is just that really practical application of what you're learning so that you can really show uh, an employer that, hey, you know what? I, I came out of here and I've got some real concrete practical skills that I can offer. Um, in a way that you can't necessarily if, you know, if the only place you've ever really been is the library. Chloe, what were you said that you had used one of, sorry for the barking dog, but this is what happens when we work at home and another dog passes by. I actually know what that feels like. I want to, I, when people pass by, I want to wag my tail too, you know, in isolation here and bark. Uh, anyways, uh, you, you know, Chloe knows me. Um, Chloe, what were you saying? How did you find that BSC project that you used for your group? So, yeah, it was, I think it's been a little bit buried in my school district, but um, uh, one of the pillars of our, our new our Salish Sea environmental chapter um, that we wanted to make as a goal was to look into why in the school systems waste and compost, like there's no, still no good system. Like we've been trying to recycle since the eighties. Um, it's been a little bit waylaid here with the COVID and all the return to garbage. <laughs> in the last year. Um, but what we did is we, we held a big council with um, three different district teachers and um, some private schools and stuff and sort of had a discussion. And then when we went, went back to our districts, uh, in my district, we met with the, the waste manager and he handed us this report, which had been detailed like five years previously about everything that's wrong with our school district but, or right. And, and also had a list of recommendations and he apologized profusely on how they had really just taken the report and shelved it um, and carried on, but um, we've now got hold of it. So it's something that um, is certainly driving us in the back of our mind as we look to where I'm in a Saanich, in, in the Saanich School District and the, our municipality is looking at the One Planet Initiative to engage and we're working with schools to eliminate waste and create gardens and all these kinds of things. So it's a piece of that puzzle is to return to it and say like, okay, here's some recommendations. And it, yeah, it came from that program and, and the students um, that did that work. So it's great to have something data wise to go forward with. Yeah, so. yeah it can be a, the, the major projects can be a, a really interesting way for nonprofits, school districts, um, other organizations to really get a whole bunch of data and some recommendations and some analysis done for really very little cost on their part um, and a whole lot of experience on the part of our students. So it's, it's a really, really valuable part of the program. 
particularly if you're coming into the program like so many of our students do and they're switching fields into environmental science or they're coming straight out of their diploma program and they really don't have that work experience behind them to say, hey, yeah, I've got my degree now and all the experience that I had was like in other fields. Um, so this is a nice piece for them to be able to, to bring forward and say, hey, you know what? I do actually have a little bit of environmental experience um, that builds on that major project. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that. I love the synchronicity here. Just in this small call, you see how far reaching the BSC and meek collide out in the world. <laughs> Christina. I, can I add about the what Mickey was saying is um, I think the one thing that it that the major projects provide the students is definitely that actual like stakeholder engagement um, um, what is it experience because like being in school it's so isolated we're always working with our teachers and our classmates but like what's more tangible is when you actually reach out to the community and work with people who are actually doing like who are doing that actual work um, and stuff. So yeah, I thought that was that's a cool part of the program for sure. Love it. Um, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to ask Chloe a little bit because I you know I just do want to hear a little bit about your experience of field school. If you could talk a little bit of that, because that is kind of one of our central pieces of the Meek program, but uh, the last few years has been on hold until we can get back together. So I think you were the last group to go out in the field, and maybe how was that experience for you, and what did it matter, and you know, <laughs> how has it carried on for you? It'd be good to hear a little bit about that uh, biosphere and sustainability course, if you don't mind. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Um, it was something that actually, I guess it was introduced in the program and then it didn't exist for a few years. So my husband didn't get um, a chance to do as they just did the courses on campus, which I think was beautiful, but to a different level of, I guess, applicability because you're talking about sustainability. Um, and, and for the field school, for us, we went out to the area around um, Tofino in in a house at territory for the most part. And uh, we were moving between some of the islands there. Um, and it was really that sort of living your learning piece. Um, I think it sort of exists in all of the courses to a certain degree. Um, but in this case, um, it was a weaving in of that sort of sense of community in the cohort. Uh, I'm getting some intense time together to share and reflect um, <laughs> after you whammed in a whole bunch of readings <laughs> beforehand. But then it was beautiful because the, the community came to us and worked with us. And I think that is really the, the amazing thing is we learned from them and, and sort of engaged with them where we had a guy that deals with um, sort of education about bearware and sort of his history in, in that area. And then we had sort of a dialogue with that. And then we met elders in the community. Um, we went, one of the sites we stayed on was where an old residential school was. Um, and that place um, is now becoming a campground and a healing place. And sort of the emotions and the learning that comes from not, not factual learning, but actually being in that place and experiencing um, both the regeneration and the sort of loss. There was a graveyard um, and there was old bits of relics all around. Um, was very emotional. Um, and I think learning, I, I come from a Bachelor of Science, so that's sort of the analytical, but all learning is is both emotions and sort of the analytics. And, and, and then like, what do you do about it? How do you take that forward? Um, how do you balance all, sustainability is not just like an easy topic to just say like, here are the ways that you're gonna solve this problem. Here's the way we're gonna solve the climate problem by throwing out these facts is the reality that it's not facts <laughs> that are necessarily are gonna, you, you need to balance both of those worlds and then you need to deal with the people. And then sort of from there, like just processing that with the eco psychology course that um, came next when we came back to campus was really, really beautiful. Um, tight is tighter, but then also really gave us sort of that push to, as we went all out into the world for our next online, which ended up being 
basically the rest of our degree. Um, yeah, that sort of carrying forward that knowledge of the com complexity, I think, um, and the beauty of, of that complexity. I think that's that's really what came for me. And, and, and the discovery really that I was doing a master's of arts <laughs> um, where things like poetry and drawing and stuff like that also became a part of the learning, not just reading papers, um, but also that dialogue. So all those different pieces of communicating, so. Thanks, Chloe. I see Leslie's ready to chat. Yes, um, I hate to interrupt. This has been wonderful. Thank you very much, dear students or former students, I should say. Um, we've had some pretty good questions in the chat box. So if you don't mind, I think we've only got a few minutes left. And so I think we should try to tackle them. The first one was about the differences between the uh, MEM program and the MEP program. And this is a subject that we uh, talk about a lot in the school. Basically, all the programs in the school share values and concerns about environmental issues and the state of the world we're in right now. But there are differences among them. MEM and MEP are both wonderful programs, and they're really really popular. But let me just try to elucidate some of the differences that I see. Everyone's got a different idea on this. Um, MEP is entirely online and it's very flexible. Students can take the courses in, in any order and which courses they want. There are also students can take up to three courses from the University of Denver programs. And these are mostly science-based courses, uh, but they're excellent because they give students a more international feel. Um, MEM, the, the program is pretty fixed. Students only have one or two electives in that program, whereas MEP is very, very um, flexible. And also MEP can incorporate the graduate certificates so the graduate certificate in the science and policy of climate change, but we have another graduate certificate that has been on hold for the last year. Hillary, do you want to say something about that? Yeah, the GC and Sustainable Community Development, we're just reinstating it and uh, it's a beautiful certificate where uh, you learn foundations and radical collaboration and you know, a lot about systems up front. And then we come in an, an experiential nine days on campus, work with the municipality on the real messy, wicked problems using uh, maker space and open space and uh, interviewing and all kinds of different processes to get to the heart of what's really going on. And then in terms of the final course, we create action plans for city uh, for mayor and council. And uh, we can, I can safely say that in the city of Victoria, the two years we worked with them, they took up many of those recommendations and took them forward. Very highly experiential and it can ladder in. So we're happy to bring Thank you. Thanks very much, Hillary. And I've just been notified that we can go a bit longer until 155. So we'll push on. Another main difference between the two programs is that MEM offers a thesis and a major project as the capstone courses in, for MEM. MEP offers a, an, um, a practicum, which is like an internship, so that students who are not already working have a, an opportunity to work in an organization um, or a research paper, which is, um, not as much effort as a thesis, and so has fewer uh, credits attached to it. Those are the main differences. We could go on more and more, but we have a couple of really good other questions. And um, two people have asked about, I hope, I hope that was a bit of a, an answer to your question about the differences between the programs. The other good questions were about the availability of jobs after these programs, after graduating from these programs. And that's something, I'm just going to say something, but I'd like the students to add to that. Um, the jobs, most of the jobs in the environmental field have not yet been invented. 
Um, so there will be a huge range of jobs um, in, in the environmental fields, I should say. Uh, everything from jobs in education, in communication for our MEEK students, uh, government jobs at all levels from local government to international government to the UN system, uh, consulting jobs, jobs in industry, um, whether compliance or how to address climate change, which many, many companies are struggling with right now. Um, so, you know, the range is incredible. I think my colleagues will agree with me on that. But I wouldn't mind having the students say something about where they think they're going in terms of jobs in the environmental field. Uh, Eugene, other than HR, <laughs> that you're hoping to get into at some point. Absolutely. So the water and wastewater industry is an ever-growing industry. And and um, like Leslie says, you know, it's it's some of these jobs don't exist yet but as we know within canada you know with with the first nations uh, um reserves there's there's such an issue with with water and wastewater mm -hmm. and we're seeing a lot of contracts coming up uh that are focusing within that system but i what i want to say is nobody's going to give you a job a job for for anyone who is looking for a job the number one thing is networking. It's about who you are talking to and um, and getting yourself out there. It's marketing for yourself. Nobody's going to you know pick you off the street and say, here, have a job. Um, with a degree, it really helps to get a job, but nobody's going to know anything about you unless you really sell yourself. And, and that's the one thing that um, I think a lot of people misunderstand about, you know, getting a degree or, or a master's degree at that. It's about trying to get out there and, and showcasing who you are as a person and the skills that you, you have um, in terms of wanting a position or getting a job. Again, it's, it's not necessarily what you have on paper. It's, it's what you have to offer and, and showcasing that. Thank you, Eugene. That was a great answer. And in terms of First Nations, all of our programs are dealing more and more with uh, reconciliation issues. And Hillary talked about their field camp and my uh, capstone course in the climate uh, change. Students can have an opportunity to work with First Nations on their responses to climate change. But let's go to Chloe and Christina about the jobs question. Well, I'll be Chloe. quick because I know time is short, but I, I'll, um, okay. I'll just say that. So I have a job because I'm a teacher, but I, I think I've gained so much. One of the words that is not really used in, in any of the courses, the word leadership, I've gained quite a lot in there, even though I didn't do an MA in leadership. Um, and I, I'm one of the things I'm working on, even though right now it's a, a volunteer position more than anything, is, is that putting that component into education of environmental um, education, environmental sustainability, um, because we don't, we put it in little pockets into our courses, um, but the school districts I see need to move towards a bigger umbrella of looking at that and putting teachers and other educators in community facilitating and networking roles um, and, and help, to help teachers connect with the community and to have teachers build their own strengths. And then that trickles down to the student voice and all that stuff. So I feel like that's right. where, where it's going for me for, for education wise <laughs> and, and job wise. Those jobs aren't created yet, but they're going to be. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you, Chloe. Christina. Yeah, so I'm in the job market um, and uh -huh, have, been, good. have been since um, October. Uh, but yeah, just applying for jobs um, has definitely been difficult in this climate. Um, and yeah, because there would be one for every job application, there's probably close to 200 applicants, even for yeah, even for those like entry level, you know, internships. Um, so I've definitely had some some issues with that. Um, but I found that with every application that I've done, um, it's kind of been a step closer to to a position that I think that would best fit me. Um, and good. 
and I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I want to end up. Um, but just being in Victoria and being exposed to kind of like the, the environmental management systems that um, are used here, I'm hoping to go um, uh, kind of into the restoration and and um, that kind of area. So I, I actually just got uh, did an interview last Friday with um, with a local NGO and hoping to hear back tomorrow. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's I, I think I've had um, I've talked to quite a few other people who are in my position in Victoria and they're definitely having um, uh, you know, the same kind of problem I am with trying to make themselves be uh, to stand out in those 200 applications. Um, because right now, all we have, <clears throat> all we have to show for ourselves is our resume. Um, so, you know, yeah. in, in trying to do that, like reaching out to the community, I've tried to, um, you know, with the, with the health restrictions and everything, volunteer with um, local groups. Um, I've been doing some work, some restoration work with um, one of the UVic um, ecological oh, good. clubs. And Excellent. Yeah, just getting my really using my LinkedIn, which I did not use much before. <laughs> um, and that, like yeah. at webinars. Yeah. But you know, Christina. Thank you, Christina. Good luck. Sorry, Thank you. Hillary, just, go ahead. Your work is, is we consider that absolutely equal to paid employment. So good for you. Yes. That's, yes. Absolutely That's excellent. excellent initiative. Yeah, I can see. And, and you, all of you are on the right track with networking. You know, the great thing about these programs is they're all pretty applied. So they do give you some real applied skills, but also the um, the residencies and even the online courses create a network of your fellow students who are often just as helpful as anyone else mm -hmm. in finding jobs. Also, Eco Canada has a wonderful job board. And uh, if you join Eco Canada, I don't know if any of you are members of Eco Canada, but uh, your programs are connected with Eco Canada, as are the Environmental Practice Program. Great opportunity for networking. And they have events all over the country where you meet other Eco Canada members. So I think you're all, that's all really good advice. Go thanks, ahead, Ellie. Leslie, that's fantastic. And thanks, everybody. For this, I can see Chris yes. and Andrea are here. Uh, yeah, because it looks like we're almost out of time. But yeah, we I think that's <laughs> for us at the end. So don't go anywhere yet. So over to you, Christy. Thank you all so much. It was really um, super fascinating listening to all of your experiences. And I also took the program that Hillary mentioned, the Graduate Certificate in Sustainable Community Development. So I resonated a lot with different points that you all picked up on. So it was really great to hear. Before you all leave the session for day, today, I'm just going to share a few final resources. So hang tight with me just for a moment as we do that. So if you do want to find out any more about these programs, you're welcome to reach out to our, our enrollment team. They are a fantastic network for you to connect with and ask any questions surrounding your applications, surrounding which program is going to be right for you, anything like that. And as well, you can reach out to our wonderful program heads who facilitated this panel discussion today. They are here to help as well. And some other resources that might be handy to you. We actually have, first of all, two webinars coming up tomorrow as part of this open house event. One of them is going to be led by Hillary, and another one is going to be led by Sharon, our lab coordinator, and she's going to take you on a tour through our brand new labs. So really excited for those and you're welcome to check them out if we can actually um, Mark is sharing some other resources there as well. I'll touch on in a moment, but if you can as well, Mark, share the link to the schedule for tomorrow, that would be great. Um, but we also have two webinars next week that you can tune in on, one that Hillary is hosting again. So she is gonna be touching on some of more of the research that our students in the Meek program have done. So really excited to hear more about those experiences. And as well, we have the launch of our Building Back Better webinar series that Leslie is gonna be one of the hosts of as well. And I think Mark <laughs> has a link for that one too. So 
lots of resources for you to check out and keep on learning even if you're not in the programs yet but we do hope that you do join us as part of our royal roads community and so, Chris, just another note on the meek webinar next week it also features financial awards students who have won financial awards because that can always be a barrier so just a note on that's that. great yeah that's yes, great exactly thank you everyone for more. joining us thank you oh, it was more wonderful. wait leslie we've got one oh, more sorry thing. here we go sorry. okay oh, yes right. thank you hillary okay. to end our session today we're really really excited for chloe to share some final words with us she's actually going to share a poem to end our session so chloe if you're i think you're still on, there you are. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen again so we can see your face front and center. And then after that, I hope you'll join us for our next session. After this, we'll be touching on the School of Business Administration, but so very glad that you've been able to join us in this session today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And, and I'll just say that this is a poem that helped me with my research as it helped me identify my personal journey that I went through in the whole, the whole process really, and the new journey and my thesis. Um, so I'm just gonna read it and I'm thankful to have the chance here with, with the time running short. I am a teacher, a mom, mother earth speaking, only human, only one, and I feel alone. I am a teacher and I feel lonely. I teach in a box and I feel caged. I'm buried by the intentions of a system to educate everyone to the same standard. And I feel the weight of 10,000 test papers, assessment practices, curricular competencies, lines of desks, chairs, children lugging baggage on their backs and in their minds. My own conditioning makes me culpable. In a time of environmental crisis, when the world stands on a precipice, a tipping point, can we change to save ourselves can we unbind our minds enough so we all feel the thrum of the earth? And still in the schoolyard, the garbage is overflowing the bins and the grass desert calls to me. Help me be something more. Help us help yourself. I am a teacher and I came here with intention, with the intention to make a better world, to shift systems to be more holistic, more in tune. But I still need to mark this test paper. Just a minute. There is no time, there is no time, there is no time. And every time I start to really connect with someone, the bell rings. Ugh, I want to yell, we are teachers. We are beings of earth and we are the ancestors of the future. So I gather all the courage and I whisper out the question, is there anybody else there who feels the same? And the human networks snap and crackle in wonderful ways. And one day there is two. There is me and there is you. And it too cuts through the loneliness and it is enough. It is enough to slice the shackles in my own head and I take hold of my heart and I climb into the driver's seat and nobody stops me. And two, it grows to 22 and we open a space. We open a space for the earth in our praxis, in our practice. We investigate, ruminate, deliberate and create, but most of all, we just give space. And we hold metaphorical hands across four districts. And as the next educational wave or a pandemic hits us, we float and we hold on. And I'm now one of many and we are a circle, a circle of educators who care deeply about earth. I feel powerful and I'm no longer alone. And I am a teacher, a mom, and I hear the earth calling and I'm calling the circle. Can you hear me? Then come join me. Thank you. Yay! Yay! Thank you so much, Great. Chloe. Chloe. <laughs> that was amazing already. And thank you so much, Christina and Eugene, Leslie, Mickey, and Hillary for this session. That was such a wonderful way to end for today. And with that, we are going to transition onto our next session, all about the School of Business. So thank you, everyone. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, and thanks, Christy. Bye.